2024 begins a new chapter in the survival sandbox franchise of dinosaur infested islands of discovery to space age tech flying power range kaiju fights and with a wealth promised for this year only recently just changed to reflect a surprise early arrival for both mine and your benefit let's take a look at 10 things to get excited for the ascended revival of arc news just in revealed to us on New Year's Eve through wildcard social channels and perhaps owed to a wavering concern of lacking official content between now and its upcoming second canon map, the centre opens its arms as our very next official map to arrive to ascend it in Feb. Originally planned for May, the underrated but understandably most tired map of ASE brings forth a new Unreal 5 reimagining to the ascended delivery. Iterated time and time again by myself, this vertical wonder offers perhaps the most untapped potential of any redesigned map from its evolved origins, owed to being one of the very first maps delivered to the original arc way back in 2016. And based on an early grasp of assets and map environments we'd see fleshed out in later maps through Ark's history. Its biggest criticism throughout was the lack of exclusive creatures, now retorted with not quite the original giant aqua saddle sea living Shastasaurus we originally was promised, but the caregiving little one nurturing Gigantoraptor. An excitable entry seemingly owed to use with wild baby creatures, helping you to find them and take them home, seemingly like a Maywing, will offer a new type of buff when in proximity of its mothering Gigantoraptor. Gigantoraptor to perhaps make even stronger iterations of the creatures we already know. Nevertheless, a questionable wonder why the original Ragnarok exclusive creature has been swapped into a map more known for its deep sea areas and more fitting to the giant whale-like undersea home. But a brand new creature is still a brand new creature and I wonder what more can be expected of the centre and its content, considering the island's mediation of subtle and larger differences but overall still the very same map we know in layout, will this second instalment do anything different, such as a more aberrant underworld and certainly desired use of a completely vacant sea level, or could its facelift be enough to tide us over until the very next month? March welcomes the second and arguably most punishing of environment scorched earth. Again, reimagined in ascended with all the wizened bangs to be excited for in Unreal 5, but already promised new story elements. To not expect a one-to-one -one redo like we found somewhat with the island, with the devs acknowledging it never being as tied to the game's lore as it should have been. Though very late in ASE's life dropping and ever demanded ascension ending cutscene appears to be built on further with perhaps more steps in order to attain such ending, feeling a little too easy to accomplish compared to its less fantasy based predecessor. Noted to be delivered with new caves to explore, especially needed with only three in its original offering and new secrets to unlock that could possibly nod to the game's ever-growing lore and flesh out the journey relived through our diary-keeping protagonists, with my personal hope a full list of unlocks to the Wyvern armour set, only seeing gloves prior, and again as the map before a brand new creature. The ferocious Juna dwelling for Solar Sucus brings a new element in traversal of the vast foot burning sands littering the outskirts of the map, able to dive underneath and sand shark their way through like their giant tremor hellworm sand swimming counterparts and noted to be used somewhat to tame them needing to steer them into rocks and cliff sides to stun them into a momentary interaction of taming for yourself to ride and make use of sand swimming yourself boasting a DOT magnetized area attack to stack and wreck havoc alongside armor corroding abilities we'd once again assume will negate 
creature saddles, and perhaps double as some counter to the other ground dweller acid spitting tank basilisk. Either way, noting how well environments are affected by rainfall, clouds and sea levels on the island, taking advantage of physics plugins, with the four variant gameplay shaping environment effects of Scorched Earth in its current iteration, it's with some anticipation how eye candy filling electrical storms specifically could fill us with, and or how brutal sandstorms could punish our viewing experience even further to demanding its map exclusive armor set desert gear. And speaking of map exclusive gear, Ascended introduces a whole new type of exclusivity in the form of optional paid side sister expansion packs, formerly known as adventure packs and planned to drop alongside map launches, perhaps only story canon map launches, but seemingly introduced firstly with Scorched Earth as a branded frontier adventure pack. The offering seems to detract from the survival aspects entirely to focus on sandbox role-playing revisions of play. With this specific one at least offering new cowboy and cowgirl outfits and accessories, structure skins to remodel existing models as seen with the most recent turkey trials and winter wonderland events, wagons to ride, bar games to play, most notably trains and railway tracks that really question a new way of playing arc specifically and most controversially at all, at least one new creature. Despite all of the maps and their content planned to be included with Ascended's purchase price, these new paid content pieces leave some concern for question owed to official compatibility. Despite all of the maps and their content planned to be included with Ascended's purchase price, these new paid content pieces leave some concern for question owed to official compatibility. Personally, I couldn't see trains and tracks being allowed on official owed to its detachment from a PvP experience, and as such, wouldn't find players bounding around on concerning pay to win creatures in the vanilla official servers to then only satisfy single player or unofficial playthroughs, but if treated as the next on the list and likely would be to be required to own to play alongside others on your community servers, could we see these doomed from the start? Wildcard hope these adventure packs to enable their entire team to continue working on Ascended for the years to come, and, and imagine would be monitored to develop entirely based on this first offering success. But all to play for, based on price and how much content is offered and what experiences they can hope to create to entice players from the vanilla survival game they already expect and are comfortable with. Which brings us to the ambiguous potential of modded content. It's undeniable how successful and complementary arc mods have been for the original instalment. From new handcrafted beautiful monstrosities to rich detailed themed maps full of wonder and exploration to complete game changing overhaul styles of play. Now harnessed and charged by contracted company Overwolf paves way for a new delivery of Unreal 5 assets offered to all platforms including console to cross play alongside each other with some giant prize giving incentives already over 1000 available to play today and seemingly DLC worthy content inviting stakeholders and other game studios to offer thousands of hours of content promises an exciting future and longevity of Arc Ascended. As mentioned prior, at some point during quarter one we will see the rollout of paid mods, iterated to be applicable to the most premium of mods, with price points ranging between $2 to $15. Layers a concern of visibility, needing all players to have paid for decided content to play together, and worries if it'll doom some mods to lose the impact they desire to be shelved behind the most prestigious available, but equally could enable a whole world of interaction as seen with other mod heavy games to deliver infinite ways of playing. But really, it's still in its infancy, with many more maps still to be seen and content from devs with already proven games made could find some seriously huge content appearing over the next few months and redefine how to play Ark in the future. 
Touted for July, though notably quite a gap between Scorched Earth's arrival in March and the originally planned centre between, could possibly see these and the next few mentioned moved up, though hazard perhaps further delay based on SE's initial delay alone. Nevertheless, delivers arguably the most anticipated and fan favourite underground bioluminescent adventure of aberration to arrive and ascend in all its next gen glory. Noting how beautiful a map it remains today in Survival Evolved, with new looming technology taking advantage of light rays, shadows casted and colours reflected invites an excitable approach in the non-flyer sunken depths of a broken arc. Bringing with it another new creature, the feathered war-clinging hunting Mount Yai Ling, appears to boast elemental feathered attacks based on a variation of different diets from mushrooms to nameless venom and unleash a unique firepower of barbed feathers seeming to stack to cause incredible damage from a creature touted to be the new best adventuring mount for cave and otherwise exploration. Excited to see how much could change with the element-infused map, noting Scorched Earth being jazzed up with more caves to explore, and noting Aberration to offer the same amount of artifact-dwelling experiences, could potentially see more to dive into and flesh out even further an ever-popular map. Specifically, some elemental rewards would be desired from the now conversation authentically giant rock well noted to always feel slightly off to not reward any element despite the map offering an opportunity to craft such resource though noting survival evolves timeline could we perhaps see the gap between it and scorched earth superseded by the next in the list another fan favorite arguably to some to be the number one map until fjorda came along the scenic and nordic landscape of ragnarok comes in as planned for a September release date. Little to be expected content-wise considering its already vast array of regions, from canyons to highlands to sandy dunes, all wrapped into a giant area filled with explorable caves, labyrinths, mini bus filled dungeons, and one of the more detailed explorable sea environments, in fact perhaps working well with the giant Shastasaurus if planned for the island dwarfing map. A weaponized juggernaut of ultrasonic chirps to disorient its prey as it blasts sound waves through the sea, seeming to be tamed with scraped ichthyosaur barnacles to allow a monolith saddle to not only allow undersea travel and storage for you and your creatures, but a periscope and torpedo base to launch destruction from this aquatic submarine. Not forgetting the map's exclusive environmental effects such as an active volcano, hot springs and occasional windstorms, it's a hope we'll find these expanded upon, specifically the former to transform more of the map to a dash for freedom as lava rocks fly into the air and perhaps scatter right across the entire map much like the meteor showers of the next on this list. Perhaps venturing into the realms of will it really drop this year now, but currently dated for October invites the gameplay changing kaiju dominating harsh wastelands of extinction. The first to feel truly removed from the original core offering set, not on arcs like before it, but offering mini arcs instead in a mashup of punishing, health hurting, decaying life. Surrounding a city was and an underground overgrown, done away with the supply crates and exploring we knew to open map mini games of horde protection and three much more challenging giant caverns to reach and summon one of the three tameable giants giant titans to take on the encompassing and map transforming brutally challenging king titan in what was once the planned ending of arc 1. Wondered how transformative it could feel in Ascended with perhaps an expansion on caves like being explored with Scorch, a feel 
to grow richer the four livable regions to offer more exploration and seemingly needed a more traversable wasteland with the arrival of another new creature, the Dreadnoughtus. By far my favourite of the planned new additions, the newly described Fossil Genus appears to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in stature against the titans known in the map, able to absorb incoming attacks to charge up into an element disrupting bellow, unknown yet on how to tame though, imagine some blunt trauma unlike its other long-necked relative to shoulder your heaviest artillery, swallow boulders and cannonballs and spit back as acid-coated ammo. Curious exactly how this could be useful in Titan fights more so than just big thing for big thing. It's a wonder if it too will be offered the same cross transferring abilities as the Titan counterparts, or could all be abandoned entirely, noting how influential both these and mechs were to cave dwelling bases. Something I really hoped we'd move away from with the next gen remaster, but already seeming to encourage the same base race once again. This map specifically could really alter how Vanilla Arc could and should be played if developed with learnings in mind. Bringing us to the last known promised map for 2024, Valguero. Planned for December, though I'd already expect it to be pushed back to 2025, is a lovable map to some, admittedly not one of my favourites, perhaps feeling just a little lacklustre in cave exploration, with a hope to really expand upon and flesh out some much needed adventure. But undeniably offering some luscious landscapes from the elevated white cliffs to the mini underground aberration cave system, feeling like if Ragnarok and Aberration had a baby without drakes and reapers, some mark is just missed it feels deserving of. Perhaps its closed valley could be addressed to warrant peaks desired to be explored before falling way to a surrounding sea, but the addition of a unique mini bus or two alone within expanded labyrinths could be just enough, and I wonder what new creature could we see arrive with this, being the only one to leave us in the dark as of yet, but a firm believer any sight of this is likely to be seen into next year now. If the next on this list is anything to go by when it comes to delays. It's crazy to think this was announced over three years ago. December 2020 surprised us all with the reveal of a very well animated show reliving the tales of words we'd only read in Explorer Notes throughout the game's existence. Headed up and funded by developers Wildcard themselves, invited arguably one of the most star-studded cast to voice the adventures of protagonist Helena as she encounters the other survivors, brought through time to discover their existence and write a new history to tell an incredibly convoluted story that's simply criminal to be locked away in text-heavy documents hidden around each map. A promising future for the ARC franchise, offering a media to masses otherwise completely unaware of the game. The potential of these 14 30 minute episodes produced by Studio Lex and Otis is seriously huge. However, seems to be doomed in development hell, as put by founders Jesse and Jeremy, who knew it could take this long to make an animation, noting during their Extra Life appearance late November last year, the delay was owed to the last half being in post-production but close to finalising. In fact, well over a year ago, CEO Doug Kennedy explained the chosen streaming platform would be revealed within a matter of months, but that hasn't Fill fruition as we're still unaware if we need to renew Netflix or HBO accounts to watch the anticipated TV series, later revealed in further depth with a season 1 trailer to capture how magnificent it truly looks and leaving us hungry for more. Recently pushed back to soon in 2024, that's all we really know as of yet and with development limbo hanging over it for the last few years, 
surely this is the year we finally get to watch Ark on our streaming screens? Which brings us with a surprise project dated for November, which could possibly be the now well-known new story canon map we've been teased almost a year ago, originally planned for late last year and rumoured to be featured on Arat Prime, the opposite side of the Earth, and explain the link to how we travelled light years in space. Or it could well be Ark 2. I know. It almost feels like a figment of imagination at this point, but the surprise announcement of a fully-fledged sequel starring Vin Diesel back in December 2020, offering a whole new gameplay experience unlike we know with Ark, Souls-like third-person only gameplay, component-based item crafting, dynamic world events, advanced template building and character progression systems, well, many Ark fans may tell you at this point they aren't even bothered if it comes out or not. But if a recent presentation by publisher Snail Games is anything to go by, it's coming this year, apparently in 2024. And perhaps this surprise project is indeed that, mentioned by the dev team they planned for it to run alongside Ark Ascended and in fact are trialling some gameplay elements in this iteration to prepare for the sequel. Honestly though, expectations have been grinded down to fossil sized dust particles that there's just no view to have right now, with some recent overshadowing legal concerns of Big Vin concerning a jeopardising frontman now too, though very early days, who knows what may happen. Were the co-founders words on whole team working on Ascended leaving some nod to it lost by the way? Or will it really happen? With Snail Games pushing the money and as such the development team there could be substance in their presentation but as a wise man once said I'll believe it when I see it. And do you think we'll see it this year? Comment below, let me know. My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, uh, peace out. Uh.